here's where I'd like to get started with the, with the questions is, how did the project come to you, and how was it presented to you? Uh, well, it started, and uh, Steve Johnson was working on it at Foss Films, and V was on it, and they did some makeup tests. Steve did some makeup tests, and they didn't like them at all. Uh, Joel said to me, uh, you know, I've hired these sexy young kids, and I want them sexy. I don't want monsters. And Steve was like, from what I know, said, uh, well, I'll do what I want. And he did very monster makeups with huge teeth. And and uh, so they weren't very happy at all with that. And so uh, V came up to me and said, why don't we do a test on the side? and uh, show it to Joel and see what he thinks. And so I got Brooke McCarter in and cast him. And uh, he, he said he wanted it very stylized, and, but very, uh, oh, what's the word, uh, streamlined. Mm-hmm. And I remember what Steve did was he put tabs on the side of their face for streamlining and pulled their cheeks back like wind was hitting him or something. But I did a very streamlined. I did a much bigger piece, much more uh, than what's in the film, much more of a a streamline with a larger forehead and a longer face and chin and everything and did it and showed it to Joel and he liked it, but he said it's too much, just too much. And so I started on the film and cast everybody, and we cast bodies. I did cast with the eyes open on Brooke and on uh, Kiefer. He wanted to see the whole scene at the end when he's impaled on the um, horns. He wanted to see it in one shot, kind of medium shot, where you see it. So I we did a puppet. And I did a cast of Kiefer with the eyes open, which I used to do back then, which I learned from Dick Smith. Uh, don't do that at home. Uh, <laughs> now, I would never do it now. It, it was too easy a lawsuit or something, you know. And the alginate isn't as good as it used to be and everything. But I got it down really good. I did a lot of eye open casts for films. But I did one for Kiefer, and it was a beautiful piece. But then they cut it and showed it in close-ups a bit and for Brooke I did a cast of him uh, where he melts in the tub with the holy water but you don't really see but I I did this had an aluminum mold made on and had styrofoam faces made and we were going to fill the tub with acetone and put a skull under it and everything so it instantly melt into goo on his face but what happened was it was the coldest night of the year. We shot it outside because of the danger, but it was freezing. And they used a safety acetone, which uh, slowly dissolved the piece. So it wasn't as spectacular as I wanted to. Uh, but then the initial designs, I started after they started filming. And uh, I knew Nissel really well in London, which made the contact lenses for Cocoon, for me, and uh, for Rick. I, I learned about them from Rick used them in uh, Greystoke. And they made hard lenses laminated with prescription in them and the most beautiful paint jobs. And I had just done Vamp, Grace Jones, and... and um, Joel said, I want those lenses. And I go, you can't have the lenses. I just used them in a movie. (laughs) And I go, I'll design new ones. Well, he goes, well, I want them. And I go, look, I'll design better ones. These will be much better. And so I designed them where they're kind of glowing and uh, with all the red around them because there were no soft lenses back there. And uh, so I designed the makeup around the lenses because I knew they would be the star of the show and I had uh, I had a newspaper clipping I had gotten years before out of a newspaper that had faded and it was a blonde tennis player and I don't know his name 
I've been looking for that piece. It's got to be somewhere. But it was a blonde tennis player, good looking, with really good bone structure, and it had faded to where it had those kind of shapes on the forehead and bumps on the cheeks and everything. And I went, one day I'm going to use this in a movie. And so I found that, and I based the makeups on that, and I did a nice subtle one uh, for Kiefer, and I flew to England and came back and did a makeup test on him on that Monday. And Joel said, I really like this, but I want Kiefer to be more, which uh, made sense. So I used that piece on Jason Patrick for the end scene. And then I did a much, a little bit more stylized piece for Kiefer, which I think worked really well. And the teeth I wanted, he's, you know, was just saying, I don't want big teeth, monster teeth. So I did the second tooth. I figured, you know, I'm designing it. He tells me, because a lot of people bitched about the teeth being second teeth. And I, but it worked with the face of making it look thinner and doing like pearl teeth. Because I wanted them to look sexy still. So I did the teeth and then, uh, that worked really well. And then there was a lot of stunt makeups and, uh, you know, the guard where he, Joe did several, you know, I want him drained of blood. And he was a big guy. And so I, uh, did a kind of like a cocoon skin I had done. And, uh, he goes, no, that looks and so we did kind of a just a big floppy version of it which they dropped i don't even know if you see it in the film i think it is i haven't seen it in a while but uh so v went up to shoot stuff up in uh with the cast while i stayed behind and uh did all these makeups that we were going to shoot on stages and that later so spectacular film it was a nightmare for me because uh, the producer at the time, we had agreed on something and then he forgot about it and was screaming at me on the phone. And I and I drove down there and just I was going to say, fuck you people. I've got the mold. Fuck you all. You know, I quit. As I drove up, he was like, <laughs> calm down. He knows he's wrong. He made a mistake. He knows it. Just calm down. And I was just like, I had nowhere to direct my anger at that point. So I calmed down and had a meeting with him, and it was fine. But Joel was very uh, a tough cookie to work for. And I just stayed away from set as much as I could. And one day I walked on set, and the cinematographer who I had done Dracula, or was going to do Dracula, I can't remember if it was before that, uh, God, I can't remember his name. He's a brilliant cinematographer. He, uh, I walked in on set and I was walking away after asking Joel some questions. And he goes, oh, great. Um, the dailies look incredible. We were only going to shoot it. Michael and Michael was there with him. We we're only going to shoot it from the waist up. We we're never going to go in for close-ups, but with these makeups, we can go in super close, and it looks spectacular. And I went, oh, okay. So. <laughs> I I want to ask a little bit more about the uh, the challenges on set. You said Joel was a tough cookie. I know you, you just mentioned that you avoided being on set. What was it that made it tough for, for the makeup in the, crew? In the beginning, that, so. it just, he was, you know, uh, always yelling at actors and yelling and that. And uh, I stayed away. I, I started doing the lenses on the film. I did the lenses, I think, the first time we shot the makeups with the lenses when they were hanging upside down. And like V said, he never would have gotten those shots if I hadn't been there because I kept telling him that they can only be in there for like an hour with drops and everything. And he just was yelling at me, I have to shoot this. And I'm going, they need to come down. And it just went back and forth. And then so I, Kiefer got something caught in his eye. Some dirt falling got into between his contact and his eyelid. And really 
roughed up his eyelid and he couldn't shoot for a week with the lenses. And I told Greenspoon at the time, who was a good friend of mine, I told him Joel wouldn't bring him down. And so he called Joel and then I was on set one day and Joel comes up to me and goes, you know, the lens has looked incredible, everything shot, but don't ever bad mouth me again, the doctor thinks so. Mm. And I just went, okay, that's it. So I got somebody else to do the lenses, and uh, I just, like I said, I stayed away as much as possible. I'd go in the trailer with V and lock the door <laughs> because I wasn't in the union either. So, so who are you? Who are you? People right, were watching me like crazy, other union makeup, waiting for me to fuck up so they could take the show over. So you who know. were your who were your front line choices for the applications on, on the well, shoot? It was V and she hired Steve Laporte and uh who else? I can't remember offhand, but uh she hired them on and but I'd go in the trailer like when I did uh uh, played, uh, played the father. Uh, uh, Edward Herman. Edward Herman. He had a really sweet, goofy kind of a face. And uh, he had to be, at one point, we shot a, built a whole puppet where he's in the fireplace burning up, screaming and all that, and they shot all that, and they never used any of it. And But I had to make him look scary as possible. I did many tests, and... Uh, I finally looked at Joel, and he, he's like part Indian or something, and great bone structure. And so I used him as my model for <laughs> for uh, the father. And uh, these said they were in watching dailies. I didn't even go to dailies. I just didn't want to be, you know, involved close up with Joel much anymore. I just did the effects. But like I said, for his makeup, I went in the trailer to see, we locked the door and did the test makeup on the father and uh, tried it out. And then V would take over. So we did that. But the, <laughs> the father's makeup, I used Joel as a model for the uh, demonic makeup at the end. And V was in dailies and Joel goes, am I crazy or does that look like me? <laughs> And V was like, uh, yeah, it does a little bit. <laughs> so that really made me laugh. But at the end of the film, he said, I remember him sitting down in the chair, um, Joel, with V to take all the black soot off that was all over him, his face. And he goes, boy, I've been a real bitch on this film, haven't I? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he was very happy with everything, and that's all you can ask. And he, yeah, I and think he's a great director, and, boy, he designed the costumes, basically, and, you know, he was that's what he used to do before that and the look of the film. And I thought it was an incredible directing job and everything, and I was going to work with Joel again, but I never did. But um, I would have worked with him again and everything. I, I think that um – Often, if a, if a director is maybe not the best behaved, but in the end the, the results are good, then, then it's kind of worth it. And I think that film has such a clear visual style. I mean, it is so Joel Schumacher that, um, you know, he, yeah. he did his job well in the end, and people are still yeah. looking to that film. Um, I would like to ask you about the actors. We've talked a little bit about Joel. Um, yeah. that, that was Kiefer's breakout role. Uh, yeah, pl playing that heavy, um, and and you can also speak to the other actors. But how were they in the makeup? For most of them, this was their first time in prosthetics. So so what was the process like working with the actors? They were all fantastic. I mean, uh, Kiefer, I remember he goes, "Don't tell them I'm only 17. They think I'm 18 when he started the film." And I'm like, "Oh, jeez!" And he had all this baby fat, you know. And I'm like, "Oh God, how am I going to turn this into?" whatever but uh, he was great and I did the cast with his eyes open and he had no problem with any of it and full body casts of them plaster bandage body cast make the dummies and all of them were absolutely wonderful even the I was shocked with Chance the little kid 
Laddie. He played Laddie. Who played Laddie? Was his name Chance? I, I'm I'm sure it was, if that's what you recall. I, I will check for the article. I'll make sure we're getting I think, but Laddie, yes. He, you know, at his age, wearing those contact lenses and appliances, I, you know, you never know what a kid's going to do. And he was a trooper, man. And those lenses were, you know, they're thick. They're huge, hard lenses. And he, uh, he put up with it and never had a problem with him and did the makeup on him and everything. And he was fantastic. And Brooke was fantastic. And, uh, um, Alex, Alex, Alex Spencer. Was, he was so great. Uh, you know, and they were just so much fun. We'd have so much fun in the shop with the Madden on set. Well, as you said, um, there was that, energy and i think this is what made these very revolutionary makeups and a revolutionary uh vampire film is that they were so young and and sexy and you know it wasn't some you know lord in a castle and it wasn't some nosferatu they were these sexy kids and and uh i i would like to ask um how 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 much of the makeup gave them their characters in other words did you see Kiefer really finally become the part when he first had his makeup on? What was that experience oh, like? Yeah, from what I remember, he you know, they all got into it. They look that's one thing I've learned on films. It's like when I do subtle age makeups. I did Ryan uh oh god, what's his name? Ryan he plays uh Deadpool. Oh Ryan Reynolds, yes. Reynolds. I did a movie with him where he had to be 50-something years old about 20 years ago. He was young, and I did a very subtle stipple makeup and cut his hair back and grayed his hair and everything. And he had to be at the wedding of his daughter, and he was about 50-something. And when I finished him, he looked in the mirror and went, oh, my God, I had no idea how to play this part. At 50, I had no clue what I was going to do. I was so worried. And looking in the mirror, this helps me so much that I can do it now. I have no problem. I know what I look like, and I feel old and everything. That's why I don't think computers are ever going to really do age makeup, because it, it's amazing how much the actor, when they look in the mirror, how much it helps them with the characters. And I know that... Uh, Lost Boys that they, uh, when they were looking in the mirror and how uh, evil but still sexy they looked, I know that it uh, helped a lot. Yeah, and I think the, the hairstyles were so out there and wild, these manes of hair and, and the wardrobe, the whole thing. It's just such a distinctive, revolutionary vampire design. Um, I'm sure you've heard this, but it influenced Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh. It influenced I'm, a whole generation I, of. I told them all on Buffy. I'm still waiting for my Emmy. Yeah, come on. Those are, those are lost boys. Everybody <laughs> ripped them off. Everybody ripped it off, which, you know, is fine. Lost Boys is a huge hit now, still, and I was the first to do it. Yeah. I don't remember anything that looked like that. The uh, as they say, uh, imitation is the is the highest form yeah. of flattery. So. And it is, and people are still copying it, and they're still you know talking about it. And so who knew? Who knew? When you're working on it, you're just like, oh God, get me through this movie, <laughs> and that. But uh, who knew it was going to turn into such? But I've been lucky with all the films I've done that have just been massive hits: The Mask, Titanic. Uh, all those films I've worked on as uh, um, Benjamin Button, they've all become pretty good hits that are like on almost every weekend on TV somewhere. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't cool. be the hits. They would not be the hits they were if the makeups weren't uh, excellent, because they would be distracting from the story, and and it wouldn't work. And yeah, these like, and Dracula. I mean. I was. I remember when I got on that. I was like, "What the hell am I gonna do?" It's different. Because I've really tried when I do things to create something that hasn't been seen before. 
Well, you definitely achieved that in, in the Lost Boys, and it's the 31st anniversary, uh, <laughs> which is kind of fun to celebrate that. Um, and uh, it's still going strong. My, my kids just fell in love with it along with me last weekend. So thank you huh. for your, your good work on that film. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I was lucky to do it, and I'm glad it all worked out, and, you know. All right. Uh, How lucky fine. am I? You're very lucky. Final question, because um, yes. I haven't asked you about this side of it. Um, can you talk about just the technical aspect? I know these are foam latex appliances, but can you talk a bit about uh, what what the essence of the makeup was, the construction of the makeup? Well, the construction was I wanted to change their bone structure. When I I've always hated in films and that where the Klingons have a huge forehead and nothing on their face, cheeks or anything. That's always bothered me that it wasn't balanced a bit. So I really wanted – and Kiefer had a beard I had to work around, so I couldn't go down on his face. I could only work on the top of his cheekbone area. But when I designed – like I said, I wanted the lenses to really stand out. So I wanted to do a super – subtle demonic makeup and change the bone structure around their forehead and especially down onto the nose and because Kiefer had this like pixie nose at the time <laughs> and I, so I brought it down onto his nose to try to fill that in a bit to make his nose look a little more fuller and so that's why I brought it down so far in Kiefer and then uh once I got that down, then I just did the cheeks super subtle to go above the beard and that. And then that was the basis I used for all the other makeups. Some were yeah. just uh, single pieces like on Kiefer with the little cheek pieces. And I had to make sure that, boy, they blended. There was no hard edges where you could see an edge anywhere. It was so important to get that sloped onto the skin, all that stuff. And this was all all packed paint on foam latex. All the work. It was all that's all we had at the time, and I sculpted it all. I ran all the foam in the beginning, and then uh, Gil Moscow ran it when I had to go on set and work on other things and that. And then he took over and ran the foam for me. And uh, but I I you know I did it all back then. Made the molds, everything. And how about application time? Uh, do you recall from V what, what the average was? I don't remember. It was probably about an hour and a half to two hours if there were wigs involved, maybe a little more. But I think it was between an hour and a half, two hours. Great. And let me think. Oh, the teeth. Yes, the construction of the teeth. Can you tell yeah. me just a bit about about that? And I made all the teeth, and it was, uh, I just, like I said, I tried to do them so they look like pearls, but still like vampire teeth. And on the second one, because when you do them on the third one, it really widens the mouth area and everything. But it, I thought it was sexier with the teeth being the second tooth with the pearl, pearl white teeth. And I thought that worked really well. And that was just a, a dental acrylic that you... Yeah. Yeah, just, I just embedded, uh, it w was a piece that fit. I don't like putting them behind the teeth because then they lift, you know. So they're all uh, teeth that came, that were in the front and the red part, uh, red, you know, whatever it is, plastic. I put on the front of the teeth and I put embedded wire into it so it'd be super strong and wouldn't break. And it was up in the gum area, and then the teeth just came down and slid over the bottoms of the teeth to kind of hook on. And it so was did, very simple. So you created a fake gum line then, or no? Yeah. It was okay. very thin. You didn't notice it at all. At all. Very no, the, thin. The choice you made with the teeth is great. They're not quite Nosferatu, and they're not Count Dracula. They're right in the middle. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, once again, uh, these makeups have stood the test of time. You, there have been countless imitators, but there was only one original, and that's you, Greg Canham. So thank you on the 31st anniversary of Lost Boys for talking to us about it.
Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much.